Hey, what's up, Sully? It's Chris here, CaribbeanPod.com. Always a pleasure to have you guys here in the kitchen with me. Quick one. Late Saturday night, your boy Jones in for a soup. It's usually soup Saturdays on the islands. If you know anybody islands, that's what we do on a Saturday. This one here, I may have shared something similar with you quite a few years ago, back in 2009, I think. This is a bit of an updated version. My grandmother's split pea soup. Very simple. Split peas, dumpling, a few things. I said I was going to make this. I mentioned it on Instagram. Everybody was like, Chris, we need the recipe. So here we go. My grandma's soup. Vibes it out, man. What's up, soldiers? Don't forget to click subscribe. If you've already clicked subscribe, hit that bell notification thing. I want to all you missing out on the new videos, man. Come on, click. Got my nice big soup pot there on a medium flame. And I like cooking with olive oil. You can use vegetable oil, you can use canola oil, corn oil, any one of those things that you like using, you can use it. And since my pot is already hot, here I have a large onion, some garlic, and some scotch bonnet pepper. Just gonna put that in there. You wanna soften that up. And the whole idea here is something really basic but full of flavor. So this is why we're starting with the flavor ingredients first. I'm um, just going to turn my heat down to low and I'm going to go in with some fresh ground black pepper and we need a few more ingredients let's jump in the backyard and see if we can grab some more stuff I'm going to make our way over here we've got some fresh thyme quite a bit of it I cut back quite a bit of it as well we can grab some of that fresh thyme. This is lemongrass. We got basil there, rosemary, but what I want is some of that parsley there. So parsley, fresh thyme, and over here, we've got garlic. So I'm gonna grab a couple of the garlic scapes and a couple of these scallions or green onions. And maybe, just maybe, I think there is yeah, there's a couple of pimento peppers on this tree here. Maybe I'll grab one of those as well. There, there's a better view of it. Yeah, let's go back inside now with some of this stuff. And if you don't know what the garlic scapes are, it's these long things here. And that's the flower of the garlic. But the stems, the scapes, makes for great it makes a great pesto and it makes a great seasoning as well too, what we call a herbal seasoning. We've got the scallion from the backyard there. We've got the garlic scapes. We've got that fresh thyme. And the stems are really tender because they're new. They haven't been, uh, they're new growth. And these are the pimento peppers here. The, um, the scotch bonnet pepper, I had to season everything. Be mindful of that, it is very hot, it is very spicy. Cut back on that. If you want it, you don't need to add the seeds. I added everything. The pimento peppers, however, they are not spicy, but so packed of flavor. So I'm just gonna give them a rough chop and into the pot. Give that another quick stir. And you can see already, you can already tell this is all about rich, deep Caribbean flavors. We love our herbs, we love our scotch buns, we love our garlic, our pimento, pepper. It's all kind of nice, Mr. Tony. Nice. Now, when my grandma would make this soup, I am about to use an ingredient she would never use. She would use salted codfish. In my case here, I am using salted pigtails. And the salted pigtails in this case here, they, first of all, you want your butcher to cut, the, cut it up for you into about a one inch to one and a half inch pieces. And you want to put all those pieces in a deep pot with water, bring that pot up to boil and let it go for about 40, four zero minutes on a rolling boil to help one, tenderize it a bit, and two, most importantly, remove most of the salt. It's gonna be, it's cured in salt, so you don't want that. In another recipe, I will share the version of this soup without the salted pigtail because, as I said, my grandma never used, she didn't touch um, pork at all. She don't dine with the swine, no pork on the fork. 
So the other version I will do with that salted cod, but for today, we got that going on here. Next up, we're gonna go in with two cups of yellow split peas. And they were just washed and they were soaking in water for about the 40 minutes or so that the um, salted pigtail were cooking. So you don't need to soak it overnight because this is a low and slow. And please don't use a pressure cooker. No, we're going low and slow, man. You're gonna get a ton more flavor. At this point, you want to also crank up the heat to get things going. But first, deglaze the bottom of the pan there because all that garlic and onion and everything is down there. And the key ingredient to grandma's soup, coconut milk. That's about one and a half cups of coconut milk. And in the same bowl that I had the coconut milk in here, I'm gonna put water. You probably need about eight to 10 cups of water in there. Just gonna rinse that about a little bit. I'm gonna add some more water and then bring that up to a boil. And this is one of those soups where, unlike other Caribbean soup, where you have the yam and the dasheen and the plantain, cooking, banana, um, cassava. The only real root vegetable I'm using here today is some carrots. And later on, we're going to add some potato. That's about it. So we've got the split peas, the herbs and stuff we started off with, and the salted pigtail, along with, of course, the carrot and the potato. As it starts to come up to a boil here now, it's going to take a little while. As you can see, I added quite a bit of water to the pot here. And this is going to take a while. It's going to take about an hour and a half at least. While it comes up to a boil, something you've never seen me use or hardly ever seen me use, I'm going to go in with one bouillon cube, chicken bouillon. Just for additional flavor. I won't be adding any salt to this. However, I will try it near the end and adjust it at that point. But I, I'm definite that there won't be need for salt because of all that salted pigtail we have there. The remaining salt in that will be enough to properly season this. It's been going now on a steady sort of boil there. Just over an hour since we added the water and coconut milk. Notice all the peas have broken down now. Everything is coming together nicely and here is where I'm going to go in with some potato. I'm making a mess in the kitchen. And that's the only sort of starch, well, other than the um, the peas that I added there, that's going to be going into. Well, no, we've got uh, we've got flour dumplings coming. So potatoes in there. It's been going for an hour, as I said, since we added everything and brought it up to a boil. Um, I did have to add some more water along the way because it was boiling down quite a bit. Just want to bring that back up to a boil. And then we're going to let that continue cooking. Let's jump over now and start making the flour dumplings for enhancing this soup. So the three things my grandma's soup was known for was a nice thick broth, that's gonna thicken up, dumplings, and the split peas and coconut milk sort of combo in there. If you wanted to add yam and cassava and dasheen and stuff like that, this is where you would add it after the one hour mark. Because if you add it too early, it's all gonna just crush up in there and you won't get any, you'll get a nice thick soup, but you won't get pieces off the ground provisions as you would be looking for. Here I have about two cups of all-purpose flour. I'm going to go in with a pinch of salt and some brown sugar. Don't question the brown sugar on that. You're going to love that little something there. I saw my, my friend's mom who's from Barbados. That's how she would make her dumplings. And ever since then, I've been making my dumplings just like that. Just going to give that a quick mixy mix in here. And all they want to do now is add enough water to make a nice, wet, smooth dough. And all the ingredients I use here today will be listed down in the description of the video. And the recipe itself will be found on CaribbeanPot.com sooner or later. So it's a matter of just working this flour now into a dough. It will take about five minutes or so. And I, you know, personally, I like a wet dough, nice and sticky, because I find once I allow it to rest for about 10 minutes, it comes together nicely. So all I'm going to do now, 
I'm just going to put a wet paper towel over that and let that sit for about 10 minutes or so and then we'll start making the actual dumplings. It's been about 15 minutes since we um, we need the flour and put it in the dough ball there. It's nice and smooth, it comes out once it's wet. So what I'm going to do is pinch a piece off and you can dust your surface with flour but I don't really need that. And I'm going to do it just like how my grandma used to do it. So she rolls it out into a log. And you can make flat dumplings, you can make spinners, you can make whatever you want. But I just love the way she would make these ones. So you just keep rolling. And rolling. And rolling. And all you would do then cut little dumplings like so little bite-sized dumplings like so see that it's a little too soft but see what is going into the to the soup now so just want a little bite-sized ones as I said so you've got these little ones here and then you would just dump it into the soup continue working the dough ball just as how we did there. Just staging this for a picture. And into the soup. It's been going now for about half an hour since we added the potato in there. Now as the split piece starts to break down, it may want to start sticking to the bottom of your pot. So be mindful of that. Here is where now we will add the flour dumplings. <clears throat> And try and make sure they don't touch each other or they're gonna end up sticking. We don't want them dumplings being all rude and sticking and doing all kind of rudeness. Just continue adding them. And every so often, give this soup a little stir. Continue adding. Now bear in mind, it's gonna get very thick now with the addition of the flour in here. As it cools down, it will get thicker. So if you wanted to add some more water in here, you can certainly do that as well. It's gonna cook that for another 10 minutes until the dumplings are nice and tender and everything comes together. Don't taste it for salt yet though. Hold on a second. Let that dumpling cook in there for a minute and then we'll taste it. The dumplings are nice and cooked now. Just look at all that niceness going on here. The pieces of salted pig tail are falling off the bone. You can see that tenderness there. If you want it, you can take off those, take out those sprigs of thyme. Now it's done its job. There's another one over here. Taste it for salt at this point and adjust it accordingly. Now do keep in mind, as I mentioned before, it will thicken up quite a bit as it cools down. Always oh, a pleasure to have you guys here in the kitchen with me. I like to finish something my grandma never did with a bit of greenery and that is that parsley if you keep in count remember we were in the backyard and I spoke about getting some parsley just look at that niceness always a pleasure to have you guys here in the kitchen with me remember to hit that thumbs up leave comments and for my Facebook friends always a pleasure to have you guys here with us as well too my little baby is here. We've got cookbooks, guys. WestIndianFoodCompany.com. Get your copy today.